Just last week, we saw a huge update to Fallout 76's public test server. 40 gigabytes in size, it brought quite a few things to the actual game itself. New in-game content for you to explore. I made a full video on this, looking at the new shelter feature and going over some of the pros and cons. But one of the other big things to come with this update was a ton of stuff, both in the game itself that you could kind of sneak your way into, but even further in the files. That gives us a great look and a good overview of what's coming next to Fallout 76. Between updates to existing events, new content in the form of the Brotherhood of Steel quest lines, and even minor things like charms or a Fallout first free trial. In this video, I'm going to go over things in kind of an increasing spoiler rate. So at the start of this, I'm just going to go over stuff, new weapons, items, armors that are getting added, but not really go over too many spoilers as far as story content. The story content spoilers will come to the latter half of this video, and actually for some of you, stick around for that. As for some of the stuff getting posted online, there's quite a bit of misinformation about how certain things will work or tie together. And it is important to note that a lot of this new information did come from the Data Miners Discord. I'm going to have a link to that down below. There's a lot more information on there also, as well as some of the images and videos came from the Psycho Voltage Discord, which I will also have linked down below. Although something I do want to do quickly first is actually correct some misinformation in my last video. I mentioned how it didn't seem like there was a way to actually scrap everything you place in one of these new vault shelters, but that's not true. There actually is a scrap all button that you could find right on this little panel in each of the shelters. I just honestly missed it while making that video. And also one of my criticisms was how the shelter door actually couldn't be snapped anywhere. And although yes, that technically is true right now, there is a vault door that should be snappable with this shelter door. But with that out of the way, let's look at some of the major data mines and some of the future content on its way to Fault 76. Again here, we're going to go over some of the new items or things, so there's really not going to be major spoilers outside of, hey, here's a new weapon and details around it. Even further, it is important to remember, a lot of this is subject to change. It is on the public test server. From the last public test server to now, a lot of this stuff has gotten changes or edits, and a good chunk of this stuff isn't even accessible by the player. So right off the bat, with Steel Dawn, we're getting quite a few new weapons, armors, and items. One of the big new ones that got a lot of attention is the Chimera Pistol. This will seemingly be kind of the quintessential Brotherhood pistol. It gives off pretty hardcore that gun vibes, at least to me, but in general, it's going to act as kind of an alternate to the 10mm pistol, but this actually comes with quite a few mods. Right off the bat, you can actually convert this to use 5.56 ammo, and not only does this bring stat changes, but also a visual change to the weapon. There are several different receiver types also, so you have cryo and pyro, so of course it'll deal cryo or flame damage, but also a visual change. The fusion receiver will switch the ammo type to fusion cells and do again all the same things. And some other things, like a reflex type, there's actually a suppressor and a barrel extension or a long barrel variant of this. And if you like that, that's actually a good thing because it's probably the most boring of the new Brotherhood of Steel weaponry, as we also do have the Brotherhood Launcher. This too comes with a variety of elemental mods. You could have a napalm load giving you flame damage, more ammo capacity in general with the hex mod, but then also plasma and cryo. I'm excited for this one, predominantly just because it's one of those weapon categories that doesn't really get much attention or love. But then we do have a pretty interesting one with the plasma sword, looking very similar to Nero's sword from the Fallout 4 mod. A pretty simple one, a new melee weapon that will actually come with some different types, the standard blade, but then also a flaming, shocking, and cryo. The cryo actually having a different visual effect on it. And then last but not least for the new Brotherhood items, we do have the new infantry armor, which actually looks like a pretty awesome new medium to heavy armor featuring pretty similar stats to the secret service armor we have in game right now. I think the design of this one just in general is pretty awesome, but the reason I wanted to kind of section these items off in their own category is they actually are coming from daily ops. So with some of this new content, Bethesda is taking an interesting approach with how it's getting implemented. So the way you're going to get the recipe for these new items, the three weapons and the armor, all of its pieces, is by just playing daily ops. And then as a certain rare reward, once a day, there's a chance you'll get a drop for one of these new items. But then all of those weapon mods I discussed are actually available for purchase via the gold bullion vendor. This is actually live right now in the public test server. Nearly all of them have a price tag of 200 gold bullion, so pretty standard. But the big asterisk with this is there's no way to craft legendary variants. So of course with Wastelanders, you would unlock new weapons via gold bullion, then you could craft them at a crafting station and actually get a legendary variant right then and there. With these, once you actually unlock the plan and learn the plan, you'll just have a chance at it dropping, whether it be off a random legendary enemy or from the legendary purveyor, but you could actually trade these legendary weapons if you get one to drop. And the way this will work is you could trade a legendary variant of let's say the Camara pistol, but you can't trade the plan for the Camara pistol and you can't actually trade 
upgrade it if you modify it with one of those gold bullion purchases. So if I get a Camaro pistol, but then put on the 556 receiver, I cannot trade that any longer. Or at least that's the way it works right now. There is an exception though with the infantry armor that is just never tradable, whether you have the armor itself or the plans. And that can be particularly frustrating because the infantry armor plans are individual plans. You're going to have to get drops for each of the pieces, legs, arms, chest from the daily op system to actually craft the full armor. You're going to be really depending on RNG and it'll probably take a really long time, or at least that's how it works right now. Obviously all of this is subject to change, but it seems like that'll probably be how things end up panning out with this new batch of weapons, or maybe they'll just never be tradable. But of course this system is probably going to make it so they are way less viable overall, just because of how difficult it'll be to get a legendary variant, let alone a legendary variant that's going to be useful or usable. Separately though, there is going to be several new unique weapons, a new unique plasma pistol, super sledge, and warglaive. These just being legendary weapons that have set preset effects that you could actually earn by playing this new quest line. There's going to be a new scorched power armor as part of the story, but you could also unlock this skin for your power armor via the daily ops. In game right now, the textures aren't live, so we can't see what this looks like, but it'll seemingly only be for the X01 and also have an enclave slash scorched theme, but also it does have scorched voice lines, so it'll talk like some other power armors. Separately from daily ops, just typical things you can earn, there's going to be a new camo hazmat suit, a new cosmetic. As a part of the larger Brotherhood of Steel quest line, there'll be a new cave diver suit that is unlockable. There's these really cool new Brotherhood of Steel round table as well as some chairs that you can unlock by doing the Steel Dawn quest line, but also there's going to be two new allies added in with this DLC. One of them is going to be a chef, we don't know much about her, her name is Yasmin, but separately there's actually going to be a new medic ally. He's a part of the Brotherhood of Steel, I'm not going to spoil anything about him, I actually talk a bit about him in my last video on the data mines, but based off the most recent data mines, it looks like this new medic ally is actually a season reward, or at least that's how it's labeled internally, again subject to change as with everything in this video, but that is an interesting choice and definitely a change from the last time we saw him a couple of months ago. As far as daily ops themselves, Vault 96 was added as a possible location, so that seemingly will be accessible and go live with this update. In addition, the Watoga Civic Center was added as a possible location. It definitely seems like daily ops will be one of those things Bethesda is investing heavily in, and one way or another to get the new weapons, you'll probably have to play daily ops at least somewhat. Maybe the tradable status does remain, where you could just trade for a legendary variant of a new pistol or launcher, but if anything, I would say it might actually get removed where they could become untradeable and it's just there in error for now, but time will tell. With season 3, as I mentioned before, it does seem like we're going to have that new medic ally as a part of the season, but even further, as far as the overall theme of it, it looks like there's going to be this Scribe of Avalon and KD Inkwell theme. There's actually an alien under this little robe, which is pretty interesting. We don't have a full look at some of the season rewards, but we get a brief one. The Inkwell paint job being posted several times for different armors, but otherwise it seems like some interesting things, but the real juicy endgame stuff doesn't seem to be in the files yet. Transitioning over to the Atomic Shop, there's actually a lot of very interesting things coming with this, between the Fallout 1st editions or even a new Brotherhood of Steel upgrade. It seems like this might just be a pack when Steel Dawn launches, very similar to the Settlers and Raiders pack we saw in the past. A few things we know are coming with this thus far, a salute, a new barricade that's Brotherhood of Steel themed for your camp. In general, there's actually going to be some pretty interesting Brotherhood of Steel stuff for sale, a new backpack that's themed around them and also just looks really cool, pretty different from a lot of the other backpacks out right now, but even a new stash that also has a quite distinctive design. But speaking of backpacks, some new features that are coming to the Atomic Shop in the future are charms. So these are actually just live on the PTS, they weren't posted anywhere, kind of a hidden addition. But now, after creating a new backpack, and for one reason or another, you need to create a new backpack for this to work, you could actually assign two trinkets onto your backpack. Currently, there's just this red rocket trinket that is available for free. In all likelihood, this will probably end up being a new microtransaction, something you could buy for atoms on the Atomic Shop, but it kind of is a cool one, a little flair you could add to your backpacks. Technically speaking, it doesn't seem like it's confirmed that there will be additional ATX options around this, it just kind of is assumed based on how things work with Fallout 76, but also a ton in the way of new Halloween Atomic Shop items are coming, and these actually get me pretty excited. Last year, Halloween for Fallout 76 was kind of a blunder, I feel like Bethesda handled it poorly, but this year you're going to have a variety of options. You could dress up as several different things. The familiar ghoul mask is making a return, but also things like a Viking costume. This thing is described as a scary sound machine, we don't know what the sound is, but it should make a scary sound at your camp. A really cool one, there's going to be a robo cat that you could place down at your camp, and this thing looks awesome, I imagine a lot of people will be purchasing it, as well as just a myriad of spooky camp items.
items. Things like cell doors, a cauldron you could place down. Overall, it definitely looks like they're doing a much better job of handling it this year, but that's actually not it, as more is on its way via Fallout First. So Fallout First in Fallout 76 on live servers just got a pretty disappointing new wallpaper, but on the PTS, there are several things coming to it. A new emote seemingly is on the horizon. There's also going to be a mummy costume, this likely dropping at the end of the month around Halloween. This new Hellfire Power Armor paint job will be coming at some point. The Hellfire Power Armor paint job being a level 100 award in Nuclear Winter, but this one will seemingly be a Fallout First exclusive. There's going to be a new Spec Ops outfit, similar to the other Brotherhood of Steel Spec Ops outfit. And a few other interesting finds, there's actually a few things listed as both Fallout First and Score. So this could mean that there'll be Fallout First Score exclusives on the horizon, or perhaps it was originally intended for one or the other and is getting shifted, but either way, those do exist. There's also going to be a Fallout First free trial coming later this month. You don't actually get a private server with it, but you get all the other features. This is going to be right around the time when it actually is the one year reset, so perhaps some additional incentive to repurchase, also right around when we're getting that mummy costume. Some other new rewards coming down the line. The Holiday Scorched event got an update and a bit of an overhaul, just in the sense there's going to be a lot of new unique item rewards you can get from this. Nothing too insane or influential. A lot of these are pretty cool, but they're kind of just miscellaneous rewards. In some ways, it almost feels like a collection of stuff Bethesda had in the pipeline, but didn't know where to put, so it's getting put here. So transitioning into some deeper spoilers, but not really the biggest and not so much about Steel Dawn. And frankly, none of these are really big spoilers at all, unless you're trying to go in blind completely. Vault 51's lore actually got a fairly significant update and upgrade. There's this new shelter that's going to be a part of the initial shelter's quest line that is right outside of Vault 51, but in that, there are actually some terminal entries from the past overseer from Vault 51 that escaped trying to hack into the system, and seemingly how Sax may have had that robot in the room kill the past overseer, or at least it's implied that something mysterious might be going on there. You'd find his body move to a new location, a new cabin in-game. Even further, there's this interesting grief gobbler mystery that could be nothing, but is interesting. More or less, we could find entries where this one NPC mentions he saw some weird or mysterious new creature. So after this encounter, one of the bigger creatures in Fallout 76 will immediately attack you too. So something like a Deathclaw will pop up and fight you, you take down the Deathclaw, and then the soldier mentions how that wasn't the grief gobbler he saw. This could be a giant joke, but some people have actually done a lot of digging trying to figure out what this is. Is it another kind of pre-Sheep Squatch teaser like we saw before? But then transitioning into some of the biggest spoilers, we do have the new Steel Dawn questline. So for this part of the video, I'm just going to get increasingly more spoilery, but I'll give you warnings. If you just want a brief overview of kind of what to expect, at least right now for this questline, as of right now, Steel Dawn features eight main story quests. But one of the interesting things is it kind of ends in an interesting note, suggesting that there could be more quests on the horizon. Either Steel Dawn ends on somewhat of a cliffhanger and there's definitely more Brotherhood content on the horizon, or we don't have the full Steel Dawn quest on the public test server right now, which definitely could be the case considering a lot of this is very work in progress. There's not even the voice lines implemented for many of these quests yet. Getting a bit more spoilery, the overall story with Steel Dawn, at least initially, is going to be that on the way to Appalachia, the Brotherhood of Steel found a ton of cool new weapons. Those new weapons we see and talked about earlier, but some stuff happened and those weapons ended up getting spread out throughout Appalachia and at points falling into the wrong hands or what the Brotherhood feels is the wrong hands. So some of the initial quests will just be helping the Brotherhood get set up, but then actually tracking down some of the new weapons with the settlers or the raiders who have gotten their hands on them. And then from there, our larger goal is helping the Brotherhood of Steel get their long range transmitter set up so they could get back into communication with the West Coast Brotherhood of Steel, aka Brotherhood Command. In many ways, this story is almost going to act as a Wastelanders part two. You could actually facilitate somewhat of a deal or alliance between the Brotherhood of Steel and Foundation. So you get some of the weapons from Foundation, but you could also have the Brotherhood train them or help them in various ways. The Raiders aren't quite as friendly with the Brotherhood. There actually is the Raider War Party, which is a subset of Raiders that are very against the Brotherhood. They think they're taking a lot of the stuff from the region, taking their freedoms. So they push back against this and you'll have some choices as to partner with them or kind of hurt the Brotherhood of Steel somewhat as a result of this war party. But of course, you could also go a different route and not do that. These characters are actually live right now on the public test server. And although voice acting isn't live, you can still interact with them and talk to them. They just won't have any voice lines. But then here, I'll give you your final spoiler warning, just a broad overview of the story overall, some of the locations or surprises you'll discover along the way. So the deeper story with the Brotherhood of Steel questline is that Pal 
Khaled and Romani, the people leading this Brotherhood force, actually found the weapons or stumbled upon them on their way over to the East Coast, took a bunch of those weapons, but then found a group of settlers that were under attack from enemies, seemingly some raiders of some kind. So during this, she actually goes against what would be protocol and shares the new technology and weapons with the settlers to help fend off the raiders. This ends up being a complete disaster, and they get wiped out, actually losing some Brotherhood members, many of the settlers get killed, and then in turn, the attacking raiders end up getting a bunch of those new weapons, and it seems like that's how they get distributed across Appalachia. So in other words, this does a couple of things. It shows that Paladin Romani won against protocol and kind of is a good-hearted person. She wanted to use this new tech to help these people, even though that kind of goes against what her initial directive or orders are. So as they return to Appalachia, you're looking for some of these weapons, but then also you have to actually set up communication so they could reach out to the West Coast Brotherhood of Steel. And the place you go to find this communication device is actually a new location with the Enclave Research Division. Although before you get your hopes up, this is not an active Enclave base. Everyone in here is dead or was converted to a Scorched Officer. You actually do encounter several Enclave Scorched Scientist Officers, and that's where that Enclave Scorched Power Armor comes into play. One of the new characters here is Sotus, basically a simpler version of Modus, but he is based in this base. And you can actually explore this right now. It's located here on the public test server. You have to glitch your way in using the camera glitch. There honestly isn't major spoilers here, but I imagine having a surprise visit to an Enclave base is a special moment, so I didn't want to spoil that with this video. More or less, what you'll find in the base was they were capturing creatures from outside after the bombs dropped and running tests on them. And you find remnants of this all throughout the base, but seemingly at one point or another, the Scorched Plague came in through the vents or somehow got in the base and everybody ended up turning into the Scorched, including all of the creatures you find in the base will also be Scorched. And there's some interesting creatures here. You find a Deathclaw, you could find Mothman at one point, and also you could find some alien blood as well as aliens behind a wall. It doesn't really seem like there's any additional lore or backstory on most of these creatures. We find out that they were studying mole miners, they captured a few and removed their masks, and after losing their masks, they died. So mole miners need those minor masks to survive. But I wouldn't be surprised if a lot more lore is added. It actually seems surprisingly sparse right now, and it seemed like a great way to flesh out a lot of the creatures lore in Fallout 76 or even the Enclave lore. But continuing on with the overall story, you go to this base to actually get this long range transmitter, you bring it back to the Brotherhood of Steel, so finally they could reestablish connection with the West Coast and Brotherhood of Steel, and immediately after you do it, Paladin Romani destroys the transmitter. It seems like this is large in part motivated by the fact that she'll be reprimanded by her elders for helping out those settlers, even though she agrees with it, and this actually marks a point where she breaks off and creates her own chapter. Seemingly she still identifies with the Brotherhood of Steel, but she disagrees with the current elders and doesn't want to be a part of that Brotherhood of Steel anymore. Wants to help out people more, or at least that seems to be her broad approach, but kind of the second to command for the local Brotherhood that with Daniel Shin strongly disagrees with her. He in fact was the person who wanted to report her actions to the elders and really is going by the book, just identifying with the larger Brotherhood structure. You're going to have this option to side with one person or another, then shortly after all this happens, there's a big mutant attack on Fort Atlas. Apparently waves upon waves of super mutants come to attack, taking out several Brotherhood soldiers, but also since several Brotherhood soldiers were repositioned to Foundation to help train them or just help defend them, the Brotherhood are particularly under-equipped at this junction, but seemingly we will be doing this fight with the Brotherhood of Steel. And technically that's kind of how it ends. That's why I mentioned it would either be kind of somewhat of a cliffhanger in that they don't know where the mutants came from, who's directing the mutants, and also what happens with the larger Brotherhood of Steel dynamic. It seems like they'll somewhat have a major force in the region now, actually helping out people like these settlers, but then also some members of the new Brotherhood actually don't agree with the new Brotherhood. So overall, it seems like this is not perfectly resolved, which is kind of the thinking in that there could be additional quests on the way, just not currently added to the public test server. Or at the very least, based on how it ends off, this could just be the part one of the Brotherhood DLC. But as I said in the past, that the Brotherhood DLC would be coming over several updates. It's not clear if that is just these eight quests, or maybe this eight quest story is the first update and a secondary one will bring even more. Overall though, reading through some of the lore and some of the logs, it definitely feels like this is well integrated into the world, but Bethesda did not forget about Wastelanders or the two new factions with that. And in many ways, it almost feels like a part two to Wastelanders, and it makes me excited for where part three or four could take us with the overall evolution of Appalachia. Old NPCs get attention. There's going to be new dialogue with the Overseer, Paige, and Meg. And in general, it seems like this could be a lot of fun. But 
But then actually shifting over to the final part of this video in the unknowns, there are a lot of questions we thought this patch would answer that it just didn't. Right off the bat, there are a couple of new events on the horizon or supposedly on the horizon that we know next to nothing about. Despite a ton of data mining already happening, no further details are found on the bombs drop event happening in just a couple of weeks. It's not totally clear what patch 23 is bringing to the table at all. Is it really just going to be a couple of minor bug fixes or something larger? Of course, considering neither of these things are on the public test server, that also means they are not being play tested or bug tested, at least outside of some of the internal testing. There still is a bit of time, but with the next patch in particular, there really isn't time as it only ships in about a week or so. Reportedly, there was going to be a Halloween event that was different than Mischief Night, but we haven't heard any news about it. There's no data mines about it, unless it's something minor like just atomic shop items. So that still kind of remains a big mystery. And then of course, the question as to whether or not those are all of the Brotherhood of Steel quests or if more are going to get added for Steel Dawn or more are getting added in the future. So funny enough, even though this data mine answers a lot of questions about the Brotherhood of Steel and Vault 76's future directions, it has created a lot of new ones around the near future. Like what's coming in patch 23? What is bombs drop? Is there going to be a Halloween event? I think a couple of ways of looking at them are either A, they're really minor and small and just not in this build of the game, or B, they're really big and exciting and actually in a different build handled by the Bethesda Game Studios Dallas branch. We know that the Dallas team is still somewhat on Fallout 76, but tends to operate on a different build, and as such, we don't get as many data mines on that build. So maybe Bombs Drop is actually a pretty big event and it had a dedicated team separate from this one and it's going to be exciting, or maybe it's really minor. Either way though, it's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you guys found this one informative, it was a lot of fun to make, it took a long time to go through all this information. There's a lot more out there. I tried to give an overview of everything, but if you want to go line by line on the dialogue, you could spoil the entire story for yourself. But until next time, I thank you all again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope to see you all later.